Let's do one more example with the intermediate value theorem. Um, so here we want to show that a polynomial function has a root. This is a typical application of the inter intermediate value theorem. Um, so to show that a function has a root, um, well, it's polynomial, right? So we know that we know that f is continuous on on R, right? Since it's a polynomial. Um, we also know that now the next step is we want to show it has a root, we want to show it has a zero, right? Um, well, we want zero to be between f of a and f of b. So we've got to find one value of f where f of x is negative or one value of x where f of x is negative, another x value where f of x is positive. Um, now you can probably find those by trial and error. You can certainly convince yourself that they must exist because um, we, we know from looking at sort of long-term behavior of polynomial functions that this cubic term is going to dominate for values of x that are large in absolute value. And we know that x cubed goes to plus infinity for x positive and large. We know that it goes to minus infinity, right, when x goes to minus infinity. Um, and, and so we know that it will be eventually positive in one direction, eventually negative in the other direction. And if you want, you could give that argument, right? You could say, well, look, the limit as x goes to infinity is plus infinity. The x limit as x goes to minus infinity is minus infinity. Um, so it has to be negative somewhere, has to be positive somewhere. So it has to be 0 somewhere in between because of the intermediate value of 0. Um, or, or you could find some values, right? And you plug in ones that are probably easy. Um, well, you might notice right away that if x is 0, we have minus 1. f of 0 is minus 1, which is less than 0. And so we look for some positive value that's going to give us a positive value for f of x. And oh, 1 will do. So f of 1 is equal to 1, which is positive. So since f is continuous, since it's negative at 0 and it's positive at 1, we know by the intermediate value theorem that f of c will be 0 for some c between 0 and 1. Um, and this c, we, haven't, we, we don't know what it is yet. Um, turns out this is actually the only root, right? Cubic functions could have as many as three roots. This one has only one. Um, once we've done a bit with derivatives, later on we'll, we'll encounter a result called Rolle's theorem um, when we're looking at derivatives. And Rolle's theorem um, says something about um, you know, what happens when you have two roots for a function which is continuous and also differentiable. And it turns out that if you if you, have, if you had two roots, there would have to be somewhere in between those roots where the derivative is 0. And once we know how to take derivatives, we'd be able to show that this function has a derivative which is nowhere 0. Um, but that's a little ways down the road. So for now, it's enough that we've found you know, at least one interval which must contain a root um, using the intermediate value theorem. But maybe you're not satisfied with that, right? Um, it's somewhere between 0 and 1. Um, that, that's maybe not a great approximation for the root. Um, so how can you get a better approximation for the value of the root? Um, you use what's called the bisection method. And the bisection method says that what you should do is just continually subdivide the interval that we're working on, in this case, 0 to 1. Okay? So we split the difference. And we say at 1 half, or 0 0.5 if you like, we have f of 1 half is going to be, so half cubed is 1 over 8 plus 1 half minus 1. So 1 8 plus 4 8 minus 8 8 is minus 
3 eighths, which is less than 0. Okay, so now we know that f of x is negative at 1 half, and we know it's positive at 1. And so that means that our root is in the interval from 1 half to 1, right? Um, using the intermediate value theorem again, right? So what we do is we go, you know, if, if this had come out to be positive, then we know the root would be between 0 and 1 half. But because it's negative, we know that it's negative at 1 half, positive at 1, so the root's somewhere in between. So then we split the difference again. So f at 3 quarters. And this is probably as far as we want to go without using a calculator, right? Um, but let's, let's go ahead and do it so you get the idea of what's going to happen. So if we cube 3 quarters, that's um, 27 over 64 plus 3 over 4 minus 1. Okay. Um, so 4 times... 16 to get 64, right? Um, so 3 times 16 is 48. So we have 27 plus 48. Uh, let me know if my math is wrong on this. I think we're okay. Minus 64 over 64. And okay, that's good. We're at, um, so, right, 11 over 64 which is positive. Okay, um, so because it's positive, now we know that our root is somewhere between 1 half and 3 quarters, okay? Because the function is negative at 1 half, it's positive at 3 quarters. Uh, so now you split the difference again. So Next, we try 5 eighths, and you keep going from there. So you get the idea, right? You can continually narrow it down, narrow it down. Um, you're not going to want to do this by hand. You're going to do this with a, with a calculator and more likely a computer, possibly a spreadsheet, uh, right? You can, you can enter this function into your spreadsheet, and then you can start plugging different values in. That's probably the fastest way to do this. Um, and, and you, can, you can get a pretty good idea of, of where that zero is going to be, right? So we know it's somewhere between one and a half and three quarters. Now we're going to try five eighths, um, narrow it down even more, and we can keep dividing in half, dividing in half, dividing in half until um, we have things approximated as well as we like. Um, so this works pretty well. We're going to see that there's another method later on that works even better called Newton's method, it makes use of derivatives. Uh, but for now, by section, we'll get the job done.